I'm uh, Jonathan Furtado. I'm the instructor of film and video production here at SVCTE. This is my fifth year teaching the program, and uh, I spoke to all of you about four years ago. So it's been quite a while, and I wanted to update you uh, on our progress uh, on my mission here. Uh, my overall view of the, of the class is that I'm creating tomorrow's creative professionals. Uh, and uh, as one of uh, a handful of creative classes on the campus, I love this campus. It's amazing. Uh, and my vision is to, is to really bring the creative energy and show how that can also be a STEM and STEAM related course, which I've infused with the whole course. And uh, I'd like to start it off by showing a documentary produced by uh, one of my students. Film and video production documentary, scene one, take one. My name's Jonathan Furtado. I'm Mira Salazzo. My name is Robert Rubio. My name is Riley Bleckman. I'm a student here at SVCTE for video and film production. When I was little, I used to get all the kids in my neighborhood and I would direct plays and stuff and film them. And they used to hate me for it, but I would make them go through like auditions and all of that and I'd film it and direct them and I'd make all the parents watch it in the neighborhood too. I just always was interested in film, mostly the behind the scenes stuff. I've wanted nothing more in my life but to be a part of the film industry and this seemed like an amazing opportunity to take. My favorite part of the class would have to be the people that I met throughout the year. I met a lot of amazing people that I've gotten along with and that also have the same interest as me in film. I definitely obtained more collaboration skills. I was so surprised of how much collaboration goes into making a film and I feel like because of that I was able to get closer to my classmates. I think a lot of students think that making videos is kind of running around and just pointing a camera wherever they want but a lot of video production is planning uh, and preparing, scheduling, writing scripts, and coordinating everything before you even uh, roll a camera. By the end of the year, students know how to write scripts, they know how to write persuasively, they know how to operate a professional video camera, they know how to edit video, they know how to do a wide variety of creative skills, and, they, and most importantly, they know how to work in a team and deliver a product based on a deadline. Some skills that I obtained through this class was teamwork and patience. Because most of our projects we work with other people, so I had to learn to wait for them for things and not just do it all on my own time. And also how to work with multiple personalities. Some people aren't the easiest to work with and I learned how to manage them. What surprised me the most about this class is all the equipment that we have and use. I didn't realize that there's different um, equipment that you could use for different shots. For example, you would use like a dolly for just like a simple, slow, smooth zoom in. My favorite part about the class is also getting to work with a bunch of people. I've made a lot of friends here and a lot of us are pretty like-minded since we all have an interest in film. Sometimes you have to take charge. You can't wait for someone else to be the leader. You have to just voice your opinion and if someone doesn't like it, that's okay. You guys can work on another idea, but someone has to like take the first step. I do recommend this class to people who are interested in film because you n it doesn't hurt to try. The worst that could happen is that you found a skill that you don't like or um, there's always something that you'll learn in this class even if it's not about film. You'll probably learn about collaboration skills, organization skills, management, and not even just that. There's just so many other factors that you can learn from this class. So that was produced by one of my students who's going to be speaking in a few minutes, uh, Megumi. Uh, so the course overall, so I've had four years to settle in, uh, really establish my course, really refine it. Every year I'm always refining, but really I've, I've just noticed that it comes down to these bullet points. Visual storytelling. We live in a visual world. Every day we're challenged by visuals and in a, in a visual uh, uh, economy. So also 21st creative collab century uh, creative collaboration, really I'm kind of refining it and teaching them new skills and how to communicate digitally via email and other uh, social media platforms and other uh, industry standard platforms that I'm integrating into the program. Uh, visual literacy, really 
creating competent visual learner uh, literate individuals. And as most of, of the of the uh, experts in my field are really establishing that. 50% of being a, a filmmaker is, is maintaining visual literacy and understanding the power of visuals over the audience. And so we really, really uh, emphasize, we watch films, we dissect them, we discuss them, we watch clips, we really do a lot of that. And uh, creative portfolio development ultimately. So ultimately all students leave the course with a creative website and a reel, which is a portfolio uh, of their visual work that they've created, films. And uh, industry, uh, entertainment industry, career readiness. So I'm sure we're all aware of everything going on in the entertainment industry right now. And I've kind of integrated, it's, it's kind of interesting because as the years go by, I mean, there's just breaking news and breaking events, just and the technology is changing. And I'm like, just today I was updating my PowerPoints because I really, really believe that it's important for the students. Overall, uh, technical skills training. Operating industry standard software such as uh, Premiere Pro, Adobe Audition, uh, Photoshop, After Effects are integrated into the curriculum, and I'm always trying to integrate more uh, uh, different assignments that kind of really tie that all together. My students are always using these applications back and forth, back and forth. Uh, operating industry uh, professional camera gear and lighting gear, audio gear uh, is a core. There's a picture of uh, one of Megumi's. Uh, public service announcements from last year operating with a, a little crane called a jib. So uh, I kind of really wanted to definitely hit on this. Uh, over, since you've seen me, I wanted to talk about some of the improvements I've, I brought to the program. Uh, a couple years ago, we, uh, with the, your generous support, we uh, upgraded the uh, new IMAX, the video lab, to a state-of-the-art IMAX computers to handle uh, the new cinema camera systems that we just updated last fall. Um, so these are large sensor uh, industry standard uh, professional video cameras that are generally not offered at any of the home schools. So this firmly establishes SVCT video film production as one of the premier programs in the state, let alone uh, the county. Uh, and this is, uses a modern workflow, a modern work environment, and has a lot of features that really I can really go in depth with the students. Uh, new LED video lights. Just last week, I got uh, the uh, the bottom one there. The it's a it's a called Kinoflow Diva Light, and the um, other ones. These are brand new fixtures that have just come out. They are the industry is completely converted over to LED video lighting. My EAB board is insisting you need to be teaching students this. This is common in the industry. I just came back from NAB, which is the large broadcast convention. There aren't any non-LED uh, lights on the on the show floor. It's the standard of the industry. So I'm really excited with your generous support to really bring these tools into student hands because there are just not that many schools that have this opportunity. Um, new camera support gear like the Ronin S that just came out uh, a couple months ago, and the uh, uh, Zoom H6n audio recorder. So all of these I have targeted assignments to help teach the students the power of visual movement, digital audio and uh, integrate this recording sound effects and really showing them the power of the motion image uh, through this equipment. And I'm really excited to announce that we just integrated our new shared storage server. Our shared storage server integrates all backup and the students work directly off of the servers, which is the modern workflow that all industry standard uh, production, post-production companies use. So this is an exciting addition to kind of teach them a modern workflow that is, they're going to be job ready that the, by the end of the year. Um, so just to give you an idea, some of our uh, our guest speakers, so it's been over the years I had to, to cut cut for time, so I wanted to get through it. Luke Searvelt runs a uh, popular YouTube channel called Meet the Gaffer. He is a local uh, grip who's internationally known here in the Bay Area, and he generously, I, I just contacted him at the blue and said, hey, would you come down and do a workshop with my students? He's like, not only will I do that, but I'll bring my entire grip truck, and they can unload it, they can set up lights, and we did a whole lighting workshop for the entire class. And they were, they had a, a blast, it was really fun. Um, there's an example of us of him teaching the class, and then uh, Robert Meyer Burnett. He is a behind the scenes director and editor. He's done all the Chronicles of Narnia films, uh, of the, the behind the scenes documentaries, Superman Returns, uh, Lord of the Rings films, uh, all the X Men documentaries. So this is a friend of mine from years ago, and he every year he's generously uh, uh, skyped in and talked to my students. And it's pretty funny because my students go, Mr. Furtado, like, 
he just said what you just said. And I'm like, I know. Like, that's, that's you're, you're getting, now you're getting the, the picture of what we're doing here. So he's really generous. He's very excited. I've taken him a virtual tool, tour of our facility. He's like, and high school kids get to do this? Wow, they're really lucky. Uh, Mike Lodes, what am I, uh, I geeked out here a little bit. I'm really in, into uh, history. So Mike Lowe's, you might recognize his face there in the middle of the balding gentleman. He is a, a director and a host and narrator historical consultant on the History Channel Discovery Networks. He's made many documentaries on medieval history and weaponry. Uh, he Skyped from his home up in Petaluma in between a documentary on chariot race, uh, Chinese chariot racing and a bunch of other stuff. And he talked to the students all about uh, it was really fascinating because he has he's also a uh, published author and just really giving the students this breadth of like you really can have a creative career in a dozen different fields and they were really like i never thought about that mr Furtado. and he like reached over and got like a bow and he was like this is this is how like the romans would use a bow and it was it was kind of a blast uh then we have uh some opportunities for the students to learn in, in the field are, uh, we have some partnerships with San Jose uh, Short Film Festival and Cinequest Film Festival here, all locally film festivals. My students have volunteered for years, uh, and they provide uh, quite a few volunteers for them. And we have a great uh, partnership with Create TV. They do a sports broadcasting uh, event. <clears throat> they do they shoot a lot of the football games and basketball games here locally with a broadcast fan. And this is great because this gives my students in field training out there in the world and they their staff uh, uh, their volunteer staff and paid staff manage the whole thing so uh, it's a great opportunity for my students to get hands-on training right here in the fall and they love it and we provide uh, the bulk of their student volunteers so just to give you an idea of some of the uh, student work so here's some of my students operating uh, the SVCD Awards Festival there is uh, the fifth graders. Let me get this right. The fifth grader. When we bring the fifth graders here to kind of show them demo our, our uh, setup, so we kind of interviewed them on camera. They love that. Uh, here's uh, Mr. McTaggart's car that we shot for uh, Miguel's film noir, and we <laughs> shot it with a green screen behind there and keyed it in the him that student driving. Here is the, uh, the one of my favorites. Our uh, music video parody of Purple Rain with uh, Isaac from a couple years ago. That was uh, definitely fun. You can see it, all these on our on our YouTube channel. Here's, uh, this is our audio booth that we redress as a set. So this is uh, for one of our long-standing Iron Gun films, which is a franchise that I've established with the students every year. Um, so we built this entire set uh, and the students are here. And we've actually had, it's kind of grown. We've had this series every year. They, they make a sequel to this film every single year and we've had it's really, it's one of the few projects that we do that involves the entire community. We have student parents or, or actors in it. We have faculty and staff who've been in the film. We have students from other classes. It's always kind of been a fun collaboration experience. And it's always a, a this is a, a still from Miguel's uh, Iron Gun film that we built a huge set in the stage. Some examples of a student's uh, schools that my students have been accepted and are attending. Uh, Stanford, University of Southern California, CSU San Jose, uh, San Francisco State, uh, which Miguel is attending in the fall, uh, CSU Northridge, Long Beach, Dominican University, and all of the uh, community colleges here.